What's up guys, it's Chris here doing my weekly NFT recaps for all things NFTs. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video for the YouTube algorithms. I'll be doing weekly recaps every single week talking about the latest NFT news. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Recur Hello Kitty drop, how drop day went, how it's going right now, how the volume was and recap on that. We are also going to be talking about a 400 ETH pudgy penguin sell. Absolutely insane. I think it was around $630,000 at the time of the sell. And I have something special to say about that sell when we get to that section. Talking about a few big brands that are entering the NFT space. And at the end of the video, I'm going to say what I'm most looking forward to. I would like to say a week in advance, but a couple things right now are actually a couple weeks out. But I'll be mentioning that at the end of the video. So stay tuned for things coming. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. One last thing that I forgot to mention, if you look down below, you can actually buy my coffee bags that I roast and ship to you. It supports me, supports the channel. If you like coffee, I would definitely recommend it. I've been a coffee roaster for around five years. So let's talk about it. The Hello Kitty and Friends drop by Recur. It really depends whether you want to consider it a success or a failure. I will say it has almost 1 million in volume already, 221 Ethereum volume on OpenSea, and we have around, let me check real quick, I think it was 482,000 on the Recur marketplace as of the time of making this video. As far as the floor price is concerned, because a lot of people that watch this channel and myself, we of course are sometimes concerned about floor price. It really took a hit for how big the Hello Kitty IP is. So why is that? There's a lot of factors. It was double the mint price this time. So instead of the Rugrats and the Care Bears being at $50 mint price, this was at 100 which I don't think is too much, but it, was, it did just make things different. However, with that being said, I think the biggest cause of this is botching the launch day. And again, nothing against Recur. I have a pass. I'm actually gonna scoop up another pass probably this week. But them shutting down the marketplace for five hours during launch, I think just completely killed the momentum that we needed. While we still did trend on OpenSea at number 15 at some point during last night or this morning, it really didn't have that Rugrats effect or even the Care Bears either. So I just don't think it really had that time to launch, trend, and get noticed by everybody who's not just watching Recur. So I definitely think shutting down the marketplace killed momentum. So sadly, between that momentum killer, uh, between the drop itself went poor for some people. They got banned right before going for the drop. So that, of course, made a lot of the community mad. Some people floored floor, uh, the Recur passes. The actual unopened chests right now are only $60 over mint, which is nothing what we compared to the Rugrats and even the Care Bears. And the NFTs themselves is actually at mint price. The floor is exactly right now, the time making this video is exactly at mint price. Not so good, but they do have a roadmap uh, for these. They kind of have a play to earn mechanic that I can make a whole separate video on. So hopefully Hello Kitty continues to thrive. And as of course, NFTs gain more exposure, hopefully the Hello Kitty will gain more exposure as well. As far as my drop, I did just being transparent on the channel. I did grab three. Um, I had one that I had a whitelist for that was actually gifted to me. And I had, I hit two with using my pass on the allow list. And I can show a little animation right here of how exactly look to be able to open the chest because I did open one and then I sold two chests that were unopened. Going for the slightly bigger news, a project that isn't even really considered blue chip by most people, it's called Pudgy Penguins, had a 400 Ethereum sell this week. People are joking around that this rebounded the NFT market because after this, of course, Pudgy Penguins as a project and Little Pudgies, their little, the airdrop of that project, really went up in value. The entire NFT market saw a rise not long after this. The person who bought it uh, went from what I think was just a little amount of following to over 10,000 followers immediately. So pretty crazy. Uh, I think the craziest part about this is a lot of people are saying, wow, 400 Ethereum sell during a bear market. Did you know that the seller lost money on the transaction, which is crazy? So he bought his Pudgy last year around this time for 225 ETH. Now you might be thinking, okay, well he paid 225 ETH and he sold it for 400 ETH. So how in the world did he lose money? Well, he sold it one year ago on September 8th. If you go and look on September 8th of last year, Ethereum was at $3,469. Well, $3,469 times 225 Ethereum, which is the price that he bought it at, would equal $780,525. 
Whereas 400 Ethereum in this market right now, we're looking at a much different Ethereum price. It's at 624,000 right now. It's around 630,000 at the time of the sell. So the seller actually lost to around over $200,000 on the sell of this pudgy penguin right here. So kind of crazy if you think about it like that. Granted, obviously nothing on this channel is financial advice and I could be wrong about this, but ultimately this guy was able to sell at a loss but doubles Ethereum. So I think that's pr probably a good move because now he can hold this Ethereum and I don't know about his capital gains this year, but if he sold at this loss, he could probably offset his capital gains, which again, I don't want to get into taxes. Please do not take that as tax advice. That's just the way my mind's thinking about it. Let me know down below in the comments if that makes sense. The last thing I want to talk about is not a huge deal, but Puma did enter the NFT space last week and it really nobody really cares about it so i do own one of these just full dis like disclosure before i talk about it i just thought it was cool because you're able to redeem this for a physical we don't know what it is yet i'm hoping that it's a pair of shoes or something like that I'm hoping they don't pull a moonbirds and give me some socks or give me a fanny pack but uh yeah right now so basically there was a free airdrop and you use that free airdrop token to be able to mint this for 0.2 so the mint price was 0.2 so the floor price is 0.26 but if you bought the token like i did uh, off a of secondary in order to buy this one, then you're kind of breaking even right now. But regardless, I'm here to hold it because this is Puma's first NFT project. There's only 4,000 items, which I thought was pretty low amount. So as you can tell right now, it says 1.4K. That's eventually going to save 4,000 if everybody redeems. But I thought this was a pretty cool opportunity for Puma. As far as things to come, there's nothing in the near future. I know that Ledger dropped an NFT probably like a couple weeks ago. The, I've been trying to watch the floor price. I do not own this. I have been watching it. But basically, Ledger is making their own NFT marketplace. So this could be a, a holding play. The reason I bring it up right now is because the first week of September, so not quite next week, but the week after that, they are going to do their first drop on that marketplace called Brick. So if you have a Ledger marketplace pass, you actually have automatic allow list for Brick, which we don't know the mint price of yet. I would have probably went ahead and bought one for this allow list just to be able to try it. I don't know if it's going to be profitable or not, but I'm actually going to be out of town during the mint. So if I'm not able to mint it and I'm going to have my setup somewhere else anyways, then personally, I'm just not going to bank on it for that. But it looks pretty cool. You can go check it out yourself, do your own research on Brick. I do think as far as marketplaces go, it could definitely, Ledger could pull a Coinbase and just be a complete flop. Or it could pull a GameStop. GameStop had relatively high volume in the first few weeks. Although it's fiddled out, kind of everything is fiddling out right now. So it's just not a good time. But I think Ledger has their niche in the space on security. And they're trying to promise a secure marketplace. I think security is a huge thing for mass adoption. And if they can just create that, that safety around their marketplace, I definitely think they could have a chance. But I guess only time will tell. This is what I'm most looking forward to in the next few weeks. Again, although I won't be able to mint and brick myself, uh, just being able to watch to see how the marketplace does. The last thing I'll say about Ledger, again, I do not own one, but I do plan on buying one, is that if you do own a Ledger Genesis Pass, you are able to claim a one-to-one -one Ledger Nano X. It's a black-on-black -black special edition. This could be a collector's piece in itself, so if you don't have a ledger, this might be a good chance to get one. You basically have to own the NFT before November 3rd, and then you'll be able to claim it one-to-one -one for that. As always, do your own research. This is a relatively expensive buy-in, so I'm not trying to shill it. Just something I'm kind of looking at and kind of looking forward to. That's all I have for you in today's video. If you like these recaps, please remember to like this video for the YouTube algorithms. Appreciate you guys. See you next time. Peace out.